Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. Here are my top five favorite Mick Taylor things on Goat's Head Soup and Brussels Live. All right, so before we jump into the Goat's Head Soup content, I wanna welcome all of you who are seeing this channel for the first time and may have seen the rollingstone.com Q&A with Keith Richards that went live on Sunday. Uh, thank you especially to Patrick Doyle, uh, Rolling Stone writer who very generously linked to this channel uh, in the Q&A with Keith. Uh, super generous of him to do that. It's given us a great signal boost. Uh, we've got over 120 new subscribers and counting since the piece went live on rollingstone.com. So in addition to being a great writer, Patrick is a super knowledgeable Stones fan who asks Mick and Keith the questions that we, the OCD fans, would ask them if, if we got the chance. So Thank you, Patrick, for that. Now, let's jump into Mick Taylor's, my Mick Taylor highlights on Goat's Head Soup and Brussels. The version of Dancing with Mr. D that we're all familiar with, the lead track of Goat's Head Soup, starts with Keith doing that famous riff in the key of A. but that's not what we hear on this new instrumental version. This is in the key of E, uh, and Keith starts it like this. Something like that. E power chord. And then into an A. And so the, the song's in E, and Mick Taylor is doing these things uh, in open E tuning with a slide. Okay, so we're in open E, and Mick um, is doing this. Okay, that's zero, three on the low string, and then open fifth string, and then five, three. And then we get zero, three on five, an open fourth, and then hitting that E note on the second string, fifth fret. And sometimes it goes like this. Uh, three, two. Like that, so a little variation. And then we go uh, up here. 10, 12 on the top two strings. And then five, three, zero on the top two strings. You can even add the third string too. 12th fret, and then these little, this chromatic walk up. 10, 11, 12. All right, that is super cool. Uh, revelatory, in fact. It's a whole new twist on the song. Um, so I'm glad we get to hear that. All right, now I want to look at the live version of Midnight Rambler uh, from the Brussels 73 show. Um, and the, I guess it's the double time feel where Keith is doing that. I know he's capoed on seven, but that stuff. Mick is doing this uh, B7 sharp nine little comp. All right, if you were to do the Jimi Hendrix chord, like that, uh, or up here, uh, he's getting it here. I think third string, eighth fret, and then top two strings of the 10th fret. All right. Um, and even goes a couple times, he'll go. So it's like uh, one, two, three, three and. Uh, and he also will throw in um, this. He alternates between the 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 seven sharp nine. So it, you know that that famous lick that you could play top string twelfth fret thirteenth fret of the second string. And he do a little quarter note bend, and then the root is here on the third string, fourteenth fret. Keith did that one a lot himself. Um, so it would be like. All right, 
much. That's uh, almost kind of a, a little bit of a jazzy kind of a comp from uh, Mick Taylor, but very effective in that spot. Okay, I'm going to call this the Sus4 call and response lick. Uh, Mick Taylor does it on winter as well as the live version of You Can't Always Get What You Want. So on winter, Mick Jagger's doing this thing. Key of A, and in Mick Taylor's beautiful solo, you get the, uh, that lick, and then followed by that thing there. So that's a sus four to the major third here on the third string. Pulling off seven six. Okay, and then we get seven on the fourth, seven on the fifth. Then we slide to 5-4 on the 5th string, and then we land on the root note, 5th fret, low, low E string. So, hey, this is the same thing as this. Same notes, just an octave lower. He just found, finds a really good way to connect them there. Uh, and then when you can't always get what you want, you hear it again in the key of C. So that would be 10-9. Same pattern, 10, 9, 10, 10, uh, 8, 7, 8, okay? Okay, I love that lick. All right, for my fourth favorite Mick Taylor thing uh, on Goat's Head Soup in Brussels, I just want to focus on his use of the major pentatonic scale, and in particular the way he bends within it and, and the position that he's in. When we first learn major pentatonic scales, guitar players, we usually learn it uh, let's take the key of B for uh, tumbling dice, right? And Mick Taylor, Keith Richards, Ronnie Wood, everybody will do that there. Certainly. Uh, but you also need to learn it up here. So this is the fourth string. Ninth fret. 11, 13. 11, 13 on the third string. 12, 14 on the second string. And then 11, 14 on the top string. Right. So, one thing to focus on, Mick will play, Mick Taylor will play minor third, chromatically, a lot, almost all the time, he will do that. Okay, so that would be 13, 12, 11, 9. All right, and Tumbling Dice from Brussels. That bend right there on the on the 12th fret, second string, is uh, a signature move. Right, everybody does this thing. 14 to 12, that bend. I grab the 14th fret top string too. But Mick, that is a signature move for him to bend the the root up to the nine. That bend from F sharp to G sharp, from the five to the six of B. It's also a signature move that Mick will do within major pentatonic. So we can and chromatically walk down, making our way all the way back to that root. All right, if we move up a half step into the key of C, we get a lot of the same stuff. So in one time, I think he goes like this. Something like that. So we're bending on 15, 13, and then 12 on the uh, third string. And then we roll into the root, that C note there on the fourth string. Okay. Really big dramatic vibrato too. All right, for number five, I've got this delicate little thing that Mick Taylor does on the live version of Angie. Uh, and this is the arrangement that the Stones use to this day. Ronnie will get the solo uh, that Mick Taylor used to take. Uh, and then Keith does these lead fills on the way out. Um, so coming out of the bridge, Keith is doing his lead fills. Mick does this beautiful thing. Again, so I'm in A minor. And I grab that open B string. So I got five on the third string, seven on the fourth string. And then an open B string. 
So you get that that uh, that nine, a minor nine sound. Briefly, because then he grabs this G note with his uh, fourth finger on the second string, eighth fret. And it's, it's just a beautiful comp that works great in that spot. And again with a nine here on the on the G chord, plays the A note, and he gets a B right there, another uh, nine. So we got nines all over the place. So, again, C, F, G, sliding up to the seventh fret on the top string. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.